Welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Kristen Smith, Pennsylvania editor for the Center Square. And joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania reporter, Anthony Hennon. This week, Anthony reported on a choice that the Pennsylvania Opioid Trust recently made regarding an accounting firm that's going to help direct the money that we've dedicated as a state to dealing with drugs and addiction. So, Anthony, what is the controversy here? Yeah. So the background to this is basically, um, you know, we're looking at currently um, the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania handles a lot of these administrative duties like accounting services, um, you know, basically tracking the money, making sure, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Uh, But they're anxious to end those responsibilities before December 15th, because that's when money will be sent out to county governments and other localities. And CCAP essentially does not want to hold um, responsibility for making sure everything's in line, which is fair um, because I think December 15th, we're looking at something like 70 million ish, something like that starting to get sent out. Um, So it's basically, you know, we're getting into some high money figures here. CCAP is concerned about just their capacity to serve as a very, uh, you know, serve as this watchdog that's making sure everything is going as it should. Um, Hard to blame them for that. But uh, within the process where the opioid trust uh, was selecting an accounting firm, um, you know, they, they had a few rules or goals with this. They wanted to make sure they had a Pennsylvania based firm, a firm that's done work similar to this, at least on this uh, scalar level, um, had some, some experience along these lines. And so they're looking up for and they eventually chose uh, Mar Dussel, which has a number of offices all across um, the Commonwealth. Uh, But the selection process uh, was not necessarily um, ideal. Um, Senator Greg Rothman, who sits on uh, the board of trustees for the Opioid Trust, uh, he he initially um, he voted against um, approving this selection. And when I followed up with him, he said, I do not support the process by which the firm was selected and recommended to the trust and believe there needs to be greater transparency and oversight. We have a duty to victims of the opioid crisis to ensure good stewardship of these monies as followed. Um, and uh, the chairman of the trust, uh, Thomas Van Kirk, uh, basically before the vote also mentioned, uh, ba- basically made a mea culpa of sorts. Um, uh, essentially, you know, thinking in the future, they want to have a little more of a formal approach to a committee for um, vetting, you know, firms like this or selections like this. Um, going into it, uh, it was uh, Van Kirk sat on an inter- interview board here, along with um, trust council and CCAP representatives. Uh, but at the same time, um, the trust did not specify how many people that was, whether that was you know three people, four people, five people. Um, they, uh, after uh, interviewing the firms, they sent out some information to um board trustees, uh, but they didn't say exactly how long, um, how many days, uh, you know, trustees had to actually review this information and, and, and work through it. Um, so Rothman was opposed. It it went through anyway. Mar Dussel will be handling, um, these services at least for a year. Um, then it'll kind of come up for, uh, review again, whether they want to continue or not. Uh, but you know, there's, there's a bit of, uh, you know, not, not to say unrest, but a bit of, uh, you know, differences of opinion on how well the selection process was done, um, how transparent this was, et cetera, et cetera. And you actually reached out to the trust for more information about this. And what happened when you did that? Yeah, they were not super willing to share more information. Um, you know, they, they would not specify how many people were on the interviewing committee. Um, when I asked, uh, you know, how, how many days trustees had to review the selection and look at the interview information, um, they demurred on giving me any number of days or any figure on that. And they also did not specify how much the trust uh, would be paying Mar Dussel for these services. Um, So we're not getting a ton of information here. Um, We're not for Rothman during the board meeting on November 30th, mentioning that he opposed the selection process and had concerns about transparency. There would have been no way to really find out about this. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Anthony Hennon, I'm Kristen Smith. Thanks for listening. Are you tired of news that puts politics over people? 
At the nonprofit Franklin News Foundation, we believe in putting people over politics by delivering nonpartisan news and audio content that serves you, the American taxpayer. With Franklin News Foundation, you can read fact-based, state-focused news for free at thecentersquare.com. You can listen to civil, balanced conversations between policy experts through our podcast network at americastalking.com. Or you can get in-depth news on K-12 education spending, curriculum, and school safety at chalkboardnews.com. It's all free through Franklin, where we put you, the American taxpayer, first in every story, episode, and conversation. And it's only possible through our supporters. Together, we can produce content that puts people over politics and brings Americans the news they deserve. Become a supporter today at franklinnews.org donate. Once again, that's franklinnews.org slash donate.